Okay, another day, another dollar. We're going to talk about... Soundstage and imaging. Mm -hmm. I guess we're going to talk about what the differences are between soundstage, imaging, and whatever the hell that all means to people listening to headphones. Well, I guess I guess some people kind of use them interchangeably sometimes. I mean, they're they're similar, but uh, you know they kind of go hand in hand with each other. You know, uh, overall. Um, but yeah, soundstage. You know, the way I see it is. Uh, like how the space sounds and then imaging is the, the instruments or voices in that stage, you know, where they're coming from, where they're placed, everything. So yeah. uh, like, uh, even though the drivers are similar in uh, Diana and 1266, uh, they, uh, they image differently due to their size differences and uh, ear pad differences. Um, so that's why some people prefer one, over the other, mainly just because of that, really, because the tonality is so similar. Um, but they, they sound, the way they present the sound is different. So some people prefer Diana's presentation, soundstage, um, and other people like the more speaker-like uh, soundstage of 1266. But it does seem to uh, depend on what you're listening to. Um, like uh, if you're mainly classical or something and you want that big, you know, concert hall, hall yeah, sounds, right. you probably want 1266. Yeah. Yeah, 1266, I, people a lot of times ask me about that, and it, it's um, what the difference is between like a Diana Fine and 1266, because the drivers are obviously similar, right? And the, 12, the, the easiest way to explain it is the Diana, a Diana Fi, let's say, has a sound stage that's maybe, let's say, a half meter ball shape around your head. It's not infinite. It has limits to how big of a room it can represent around your head, which is still larger than most headphones that tend to stay in your head. All right, so we're still outside the head, but it, it, it's not outside as much, and that's due to acoustics, and Diana's very thin. The, head, the ear pads are small. Um, so, yeah, but the imaging is easy to pick out, you know, where everything is. It's no problem. It's just that it's, it's this big. It's a ball that's about this big, all right? The 1266 has what I would call infinite depth. It'll go out to the sides, out as far as the recording will take you. And, um, you know, it's just completely open. And, um, and, and that, that, so that's the size of the sound stage is immense with it. And it, again, it really depends on the recording. If, if the recording's done in a 4x4 four four bathroom, then it's going to sound like you're going to hear the reflections off the walls of a 4x4 four four bathroom, right? If it's done in a huge hall, you'll hear the reverberations in the hall, right? All the way out to some guy coughing 20 rows back, you know? So uh, that's soundstage, right? Uh, imaging is being able to pick out that the guy is, you know, behind you 20 rows back. That's imaging, right? So um, I guess that's an easier way to explain it when you're listening to headphones. I, I would imagine from what we're told and from the headphones you've listened to, a lot of them don't do that, right? Most of the ones you try out, they're not... They're not spacious. They don't go outside your head yeah, it's, too much. It's the hardest thing to, to get right. Really big sound stage. Artificially, you can do it nowadays, you know, with DSP and stuff to make it sound bigger than it is. But um, yeah. It's going to mess with something, though, usually, right? Yeah. I, I think it usually messes with the imaging. It, you, can re, you can create a bigger space, spatial sound, by artificial reverb at different frequencies that fool the ear in the brain. Uh, phase changes at different frequencies and so on. They got all kinds of methods of messing with your brain. But in the end, I think it messes with imaging um, where you can't, you don't, yeah. you know, especially with, if you listen to music. Yeah, it just kind of gets softer. You know, you can't really tell where things are coming from as precisely. I mean, Eric, you must have listened to some music where, like, they're doing, you can hear the effects, right, on the headphones, real obviously. Yeah. You know, particularly if, like, they're mastering with too much reverb or echo. Or they're using a cheap reverb unit or something, you know. It's yeah, just for sure. like it sounds like the damn thing's just completely like you're like you're talking in a uh, a bubble on your head. You know, your your voice is in the mic's in a in a helmet. <laughs> and you're echoing off your own helmet, you know, and it's like it gets to a point, or you sound start to sound underwater or something like that. What's you know, surprising so. to me is how 
oftentimes soundstage is, is very, very dependent on the gear. And of course the headphones included in that, but the DAC or the amplifier, even cables sometimes can have a significant impact on soundstage and imaging. Um, I wouldn't well, think it'd be cool. as significant as profound as it is, but you know, just trying these headphones on different gear, sometimes you don't really notice it. It's not, it's not really in your face, uh, the differences. But other times, like when we heard that that one time we were playing, it's like an ACDC track or something like that, on the 33 at RMAF, I forgot what the uh, the rest of the gear was in the chain there, but what, that was the one store? time. Yeah, Manhattan. Yeah. It was a Manhattan too. Right. That particular instance, it's shocking when you hear it on that setup compared to the one we had next to it. The differences in the soundstage were really stark. Yeah. yeah. It was actually yeah, quite the significant. Tube, the tubes have a, have a cool way of uh, presenting more of a sense of space. And, uh, yeah, that recording was probably done in the early 80s, that ACDC recording, so it was really made for vinyl and, you know, dumbed down to digital, so to speak. And, uh, you know, but yeah, I think we were, we found a high re higher res version in Tidal or something that sounded pretty good. I forget which album it was on. There's there different versions of that Thunderstruck, but, and you need some serious power to play that thing to the levels we were playing at, <laughs> you know, but yeah. yeah. That's a good point is the gear is big on that because I play that track now every once in a while when I get a new map or something. And it's never yeah. as when we did it on the WA33 yeah. uh, soundstage wise. Because like I, I, the biggest disappointment was um, the uh, uh, liquid gold I tried it on. And it had the power and the impact and everything. But it is just way smaller soundstage on the uh, liquid gold. It just doesn't, just doesn't do that. Yeah huge sound that the uh, WA33 can. I think the tubes add like a bit of an artificial bloom, you know, and it depends on the tube style and the amp design and stuff, but, you know, there is some of its own kind of, that's that's the warmth of tubes. People call it warmth, but, um, and at various frequencies in the bass region, you could consider it to be warmer, but, um, but you know, versus impactful. But, um, but yeah, I think, I think, yeah, I remember it too at that Rocky Mountain. I think we had, we had impact, we had space, we had warm, we had, it was, it could play it. Yeah, and I, I, I agree. I don't think, uh, I'll have to try it here. I, I, don't, I, have, I don't think I've played it on my 33 here since, uh, yeah, with, the, with, the, with this, yeah, I've got everything right here. I don't think I've actually hit, I just, for some reason, I think I overplayed it. We tried it too many times since that last show a year and over a year ago, and I'm like, I moved on. But yeah, anyway, yes, yeah, I think I think that kind of describes sound things and imaging pretty well and the differences, you know, where... It's not only the headphone, it's the whole system, really, kind of like everything, you know? Well, that's true. And that that's true. We should... That's, and Eric did bring up the cabling, and I forgot to expand on that because I'm a cable guy, too, obviously. The the, the cables, the system, the you really... In order to, in order to really create more of the sound stage in terms of depth, you need really, really low level detail. That's low level information. And a lot of that gets filtered out in with crappy cabling and uh, power cords, uh, you know, noisy power, noisy DACs, you know, uh, computers that add noise to the system. As you raise the noise for the system, it masks the low level detail. And that's that tiny little stuff, that stuff that's in the sub milliwatt range with headphones. Right is really what adds more of the lifelike nature to the music, that sense of space, and, and even with vocals, like you know, you it may, it can make vocals sound more natural, almost like there you're there more, because um, and and again that pinpoints more toward imaging, I think, where you're talking about not only vocals but instrumentation and instruments and being able to hear around the instruments and the space between the various instruments, that's that's part of the depth and the very very tiny tiny details. That you know, it's not the brute force of the music. It's not the watts. It's the it's the sub milliwatt or the milliwatt range of the of the passage that's playing that gives you that sense of space. And a lot of that micro detail gets wiped out with um, with uh, dielectrics and uh, uh, cabling and uh, uh, poor amp topology. Uh, you know, and just lack of resolution in the driver itself or the speakers. So. It's all it's all additive and it's all subtractive depending on which way you look at it, and um, so yeah, it, the whole chain becomes pretty critical if you really want to maximize soundstage and and therefore be able to pick out 
through imaging what's what what images within the soundstage you're listening to to a really high level and it, it could get really good with with headphones at this caliber so it's um you always want to tweak a system uh around trying to create more of a sense of space and envelop you more because that usually means you're getting more low level information you know and you don't you don't want to do it by forcing it you don't want to make it bright you don't want to change tonality to do it a lot of people make that mistake and it obviously becomes fatiguing so you gotta there's a balance you reach a point where you can take it too far with something and you need to back off and look at something else to make the change but i guess we should wrap this one up i'm surprised we were able to talk so much about the two two things like t- uh soundstage imaging for this long um take care everyone uh please subscribe to us we're trying to hit that thousand mark so we could run over a headphone and uh be well see you thank you